Hey guys, D-Mike here for another episode of Super Nintendo Sundays. We've got more delicious delicacies here on tap with Do Re Mi here in Candy World. See what mischief we can get into today. This game still never really ceases to amaze me with how little I quite understand about what we're supposed to be doing. Maybe that's part of it. Whenever I play this game, I always have to make sure I pinch myself to make sure that I'm not in the middle of a fever dream. So I'm not entirely sure exactly what's happening, but I still appreciate it. Still very cute. I'm not entirely sure how, if we're like up in the sky right now or if this is outer space. Ooh, yes, we get the floaty shoes. <gasps> yes, floaty shoes, everybody, look. Here at Demonic Industries, we pride ourselves on enjoying the simple things in life. Speaking of simple things, something that makes me very happy, if you're all able to do it, continue to comment, liking the videos always helps, and uh, subscribe if you haven't. Tell your friends, tell your mom you're dead. Your, uh, your cousins, your aunts, your uncles, your youth pastors, your, your rabbis, anybody that is made an impact on your life that you think d Mike Industries should make an impact on their life. How about that? How about that? I don't know if I can get in here in any way. These little pumpkin guys, I don't quite know if they fit the aesthetic of outer space cake, but then again, I'm not entirely sure if anything does. Okay, uncool. Yes, so I'm still, it, it feels like no matter what I do when I play this game, I'm always just kind of like, sort of figuring it out. And I wonder if I'm like missing something like that. Okay, great. That's always been a quandary of mine. Like, is there something larger in the world of Do-Re-Mi that I'm just not quite getting? I'm just too daft, inept at this whimsical universe that I'm just not picking up with my Jaded Western culture. Oh, this is not cool at all. I have a ball, a bowling ball. All right, so probably should have saved that for something a little better, but I did not. That's okay. You live and you learn. All right, more pants. Great. Yes. Probably should try to be a little bit more. Uh... Oh, there's lots of goo coming down from. These glasses. This is a little reminder that trickle down economics does not work. Okay. Um, is this going to hurt me? No. It is just an aesthetic. Okay. Great. But pumpkin head over there will hurt me if I'm not careful. I've already been bonked into it by a couple times. Oh, what's this? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Great. Um, I probably shouldn't have taken that down because now I have no way to get up there. Okay. So there's another example of here of us here at DMIC Industries not really understanding how power-ups work. So there's that. Great. That wasn't too bad, was it? That actually seemed like that was a little easier than the last couple levels. Those were pretty brutal. All things considered. Oh, we got an auto scroller. Oh boy. We have candy. More pants. And we have floaty shoes, which as I'm starting to understand, I believe floaty shoes are a transient power-up that stick with you until you, uh, until you become deceased. So, very nice. Once again, all these cookies still remind me of the ones from, from Yoshi's Cookie. The game's very fun. Very tough to play on an empty stomach. These look like ice cream sandwiches. How do we feel about ice cream sandwiches, everybody? Do we like ice cream sandwiches? I remember watching a video at one point that was basically trying to break down the legitimacy of ice cream sandwiches. And the video was basically... Oh, that was a pro move. The video was basically taking a bunch of different 
companies that make ice cream sandwiches. Still don't know what that does. And seeing how much dairy was put into those those ice cream sandwiches. And oh, if you have full pants, then you get Ted music notes. Neat. Learning something new every day. But anyway, they took the ice cream sandwiches and they laid them out together on a plank in the sun in the summertime, as you probably would want to eat. Oh, what is happening? Okay, great. That was a weird transition. So as you would probably want to do is maybe have a nice afternoon by the pool or hanging out in like a backyard barbecue, having a ice cream sandwich. And they wanted to test how authentic and quality, quality of products were in these sandwiches. So they laid them all out on a plank and some of the ice cream sandwiches they found did not technically qualify as ice cream at all because at least in the United States according to the Federal Drug and Alcohol Administration or FDA whatever that stands for um, you have to have a certain level of dairy in the product itself for it to be considered actual ice cream otherwise it is literally known as dairy product in the same way that Certain cheeses are not actually considered cheese at all. They're considered cheese product. So, fun fact for you. Some of the sandwiches didn't actually melt because there wasn't really ice cream in them. It was a lot of filler. So the sandwiches themselves just kind of turned into like this weird slimy goo. Almost kind of looked like gelatin that you might have if you left a bowl of jello out for too long when it kind of gets melty and soupy. I look like that. Okay, so fun stories aside, back to the very serious gameplay of Do Re Mi. Oh, the scroller wasn't too bad. I like this music. That's one thing this game definitely has going for it is the music is pretty bopping. Or as the kids these days say, it slaps and it's pretty heckin' radical. All right, that's one thing I do. Oh, heckin' heck. That's one of the things I really enjoy about this game is just that you can kind of explore a little bit. There's no real like set path you have to take. You can kind of do any, do it in whatever method you want. Yoshi's Island's kind of like that. Kirby unfortunately is not. Kirby is more of a kind of a straightforward platformer. There's a little exploration in Kirby, so I shouldn't. I don't want to sell it short or anything, but it's not in the same kind of level of maybe an adventure game, you know, it's a little bit more linear, which is fine. We're still enjoying our Kirby's. This looks like a path that's, uh, yes, that some orange slices would fall down. And what was it? There was like Monty Moles that would come out of the, out of the ground and eat the orange slices. Ugh, this makes my stomach hurt. Nice, uh, warm glass of milk to get you going. Okay. And uh, Melon launched into orbit here with these, I'm assuming, I mean, if this is a game that's meant for children, maybe sparkling grape juice? Hmm? Remember as a kid, we'd have certain get-togethers and uh, like, I don't know, for like New Year's, New Year's Eve. You know, you're watching, you're having snacks, you're, you know, wa waiting for the ball to drop, watching some stuff on television. Okay, so we have five stars. I'll put that story on ice for a moment. I don't know what this means. But Melon is very excited. Okay. Let's hit pause for a moment and see if that means anything. Uh, I don't know. Oh, okay. Is the game going to tell me what this does? Can I hit? Okay, great. I have no idea. So anyway, New Year's Eve, having fun, and you know when you're a, when you're just a, a little whippersnapper, you're not allowed to, at least in the old U.S. of U.S. and A, you are not legally permitted to consume alcohols. I mean, there's obviously like certain 
certain loopholes and things about that that I know someone's gonna be like, well, actually, when I was 14, my mom and dad gave me rum and coke because Jesus or whatever, whatever reasoning you want to have. Maybe it's religious, maybe it's ceremonial, who knows? Communion wine, stuff like that. But was not permitted to do so within my family structure. How do I? Oh, I can just go through that. In my family structure. Therefore, the few opportunities when I got to have something similar, I felt so adult. Because I mean, honestly, what better way to feel like an adult in life than to consume things that make you think of alcohol, right? We've been doing that for generations. It's the true rite of passage. Mock alcohol. Okay. So we have four lives now. We were able to cross the threshold of having enough music notes. Whoa. Kind of like this vertical scroller. This is pretty fun. Some of these levels just, I don't quite understand the dynamic and I feel like I'm doing something wrong, but I think the reality of it is just that this game is so strange. And for a lot of people watching this, you're gonna say, oh, D-Mike, you're making excuses because you are a turd burglar. And I'm not trying. I'm not trying to make excuses. Okay, so we're gonna continue on. There's like two different ways up here, and I don't know if there's a reason why I should take the left one versus the right one, but the left one seems like it might have a little bit more shenanigans afoot. So these are magic powers here. Okay, so that does nothing. Let's take the left side first. Ooh, okay, so this is just, okay, so this is just bonuses. Ooh, double pants. I'm assuming that brings you from red to green. That would make the most sense, wouldn't it? Okay, so we're doing pretty swell here. We might have time even for the the boss of this area. I was a little underwhelmed about the boss of, gosh dang it, the boss of World 1, the forest. Oh, that looked like there was more of that. Is it boss fight time? No. We'll see how long this takes me. Might be able to cram it in this episode. Oh, cutscene time. You're Melon? I heard from Tosta. Tosta? You have all five stars. Oh, we do have all five stars. We did that. Now I can dispel the cur- Oh, okay. So this is something where we had to do this in order to progress to the boss. This might just be- Oh yeah, look at him. See, look at that skin flute plan. That's- that's impressive. Just, you know, using fingers that don't do anything, not covering any holes or anything. All right, so Milton has confirmed that the curse is broken and we can push certain blocks. Let's see what blocks we can push. Great. Some people call me an odd block. So we can push this now, not without a little difficulty. We have to be very mindful of aim and shaft. That looks like that might be our next destination. No, it is not. Because that would make sense. My guess is that this area is supposed to be an introduction to the new blocks. Because that's fun. Like I like a donut. Oh look, they're like gingerbread things. How do we feel about gingerbread stuff, ladies and gentlemen? Do we like, uh, do we like decorating gingerbread houses and stuff? That's a Christmassy thing to do, right? I remember that being kind of a fun thing, is you get the little gingerbread kit at school, maybe, and you, you, you decorate those. I remember when I was a wee lad. Oh, that's rude. Um, when I was a wee lad in school, like elementary level, there'd be a, uh, a day where your parental unit could come into school with you, and you'd buy a little gingerbread kit, and you'd make that with your parents. And that was fun, right? You spend some time making some goodies, sometimes eating the ingredients before you're ready, put them together, or using too much icing early, and then not having enough of the rest of it. So, all right, so I don't know. Oh, okay. Oh, we have the key. Go okay. key, oh. Save myself there, that was a little, a little risque. Okay. Scumball machine's kind of jerks, but 
Fear not, we have our own bubble gums and floaty shoes. Here at DMIC Industries, we pride ourselves on winged footwear. Oh, okay. This feels like a bit of a labyrinth. I don't know if I'm going the right way or not. Or if I'm just going the same way I already went. This looks a little different. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Oh, we can shoot bubbles further now. That's right. Okay. So that was pointless. Great. This is new because these candy canes have not been broken yet. Ooh, this is the... This is where we use our key here. With this icing melt. Okay. This might be a mini game that I'm going to mess up royally. Here we go. Royally like royal icing. No. That was just... That was just it. Okay. Is this boss time? This feels like a boss. Ooh. He's being drawn into life. Eamon Chef, maybe? Looks like a character from South Park, almost. What is happening? Is it a monkey? I thought it was a screw at first. Okay. Um, this is terrifying. I'm not entirely sure what I'm supposed to be doing here. Okay. Oop. I don't know if me shooting my bubbles at him is doing anything. We got it. Oh, okay. Well, there is no rest for the weary on this one. We're gonna have to be careful. Hopefully it doesn't make me watch that entire animation again. That'd be awesome. And it does. I like this. I like having to see the same things I've already seen multiple times. Okay. So we'll try to be a little bit more careful. The only problem though is I can only take a hit, which, oh, just kind of scary. Yeah, I think that was doing damage to him. I think whenever he turns red, yeah. I don't know if, if the game is gonna give me anything to like survive here, because this is kind of dangerous. Ooh. And not a real way to survive. I basically can only take one hit at a time or I'm doomed. Yeah, this is kind of a bummer. Oh, is that it? Oh, he's mad. Oh, wait. Oh, did I do it? Okay. I did it. Uh, and I think maybe in some certain way we broke the curse. And when you help out a chef, the obvious reward is for him to barf an accordion onto you and then for him to go to sleep while we cry. Good question. What power does this accordion have? Ask yourself that. What power does your accordion have? You know, that's stage two done. Ladies and gentlemen, that is some high level gameplay of Do Re Mi on Super Nintendo Sunday. Candy World is complete. And next time on Super Nintendo Sundays, we'll be taking on the concert hall. This has been Do Re Mi, I've been D Mike, and I'll see you next time. Bye.